For April the 9th, 2021, we talk about Magic the Gathering Arena, Hades, and we ask you which video game villain lair you would most want to live in. Welcome to Level 366. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Jala. Thank you. Yeah. Good having you here. I'm trying to think of any fun, like, introduction stuff, but I don't, I, I, I don't have it. So I'm just going to ask uh, Jala, uh, what you been up to? How you been doing? I've been stabbed several times. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Needles. Should you, should needles. you go to the hospital? <laughs> I got uh, my first COVID shot. Yay. Cool. Um, and I also got my second allergy shot. They have to give me three shots for that. And I'm not going to talk about it in great deal for Ooh. the people who are, are, are dislike of needles. Don't worry about it. But like, um, yeah, I am on weekly allergy shots. Yeah. And that's three a day every week. The Did shot? they find like different places for each shot or is it, are they just two, going the same place two in one place and one on the other side mm. okay I, so. I, I i i will ask you this what do what do you find more onerous the um weekly allergy injections or the test itself the test was way worse. I can sh- like I I think I did actually tweet some gruesome thing or no I, I don't think I tweeted <laughs> yeah. it. I think I maybe put it in like the wellness chat. Or, I can I can show you pictures. Oh, I'd rather <laughs> you not. You really want to I... see? It's gross and terrible. No. Like I have such welts. I am allergic to Texas. Yeah, it is terrible. Yeah. Every so, everything that grows in Texas. No. Everything that grows in Texas, and I'm also allergic to my dog. Oh no. And. And also allergic to cats, so like I'm, I'm, a, but I'm not allergic to birds, so okay. I'm okay with birds. But yeah. like, yeah, oh, it's man. pretty bad. Yeah, I had terrible allergies as a child and had to get allergy tests frequently. Uh, was oh. at da- with da- was at daily shots at certain points. So like, I'm good Ooh. with I'm good with shots. It's anything that involves mm-hmm. a. Uh, like intravenous that 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 wigs me oh, out yeah. um but yeah i have traumatic memories yeah no you shared the photos of the of the welts uh-huh. those are really nasty those are mean well and like the ones on my back were not that's like after it had been a while that's not even like as bad as it was yeah, <laughs> so yeah. They, they were pretty bad but like everything was a welt everything turned into a welt and yeah. then when they further tested it's like yes you were allergic to all of texas and also uh, dogs and cats. And I was like, oh, but I love animals. It's like, okay, well, you can have birds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good that I like birds. You know, I'm going to delete that's this good. message out of the slack uh, because the welts are giving me bad memories, actually. Sure. Go for it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. I only share it you ask. Def- yeah. Definitely delete it. No, so, no. Anyway. Yeah. Yes, well. the, the test was terrible. That yeah. was the worst. <laughs> Um, so like, I'm, I'm very like, incentivized to like post terrible pictures on the Slack channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, when uh, everybody was like fussing about all oh, the the COVID vaccine and you know people are having reactions and stuff, I'm like, that's nothing. Have an a- allergy panel and get back to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when, yeah, and then like right after that, after we discovered that I'm allergic to everything, then we had to do yard work, and I was out there with a mask and everything all covered up and like i still was like down for a couple of days with bad bad allergies awful yeah it was bad well at least you're getting shots and it'll get better hopefully yep yep it will over time that's the whole thing so yeah that's my life tell tell somebody else talk about something that's not that yeah Mm -hmm. well being being out in nature i can follow up to do tell us about it the, we're we're doing backyard camping again. It's gotten to that point in the year. Ooh, so that's a that's a fun one. Hopefully, cool. our kids will not be covered in welts, welts or hives at the end of the night. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> that's that's a hard way to learn a lesson about allergies that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, well, you know, you're supposed to get a couple of bumps and dings if you're camping, though. Yeah, but it's from like you know fighting each other with sticks, not yeah, well. I not guess mosquitoes really. are accepted. 
Yes. Uh, as a bump yeah. ending. Well, you're right there. Oh, you're, you're, you're not you're not send 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 them up to the Miami River Valley and like dr- dropping them off with nothing but a knife. <laughs> they're like they're in your backyard. First one to make it back gets it back in the family. Yeah. Other one don't even bother. <laughs> Oh wow. gosh! So I guess you guys get uh, probably because you're so humid. You guys probably get as many mosquitoes as we do down here. It's pretty uh, bad. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of mosquitoes. We've for the past couple of years we've done like a, a backyard treatment mm-hmm. um, that's been really effective. Like mm-hmm. I, I haven't worried about mosquitoes in the yard for for uh, a couple of years now. No, yeah. mm-hmm. so that's uh, that is nice. It's like I I feel like anytime I, I look at a service like that or, or things along those lines, I'm like, eh, it'll probably be like it half as effective as they claim mm-hmm. um but this this was nice this is nice yeah. to actually not have to worry about them oh Did yeah and like espresso? yeah yeah um and i would be lying if i said i knew all of their process but yeah <laughs> i am confident that spraying is involved yeah <laughs> yeah well when i used to do my like long distance running and stuff i would almost exclusively try to run in Pearland, texas uh, which is close-ish to me, uh, mm-hmm. because that city happens to be very, very vigilant about um, spraying for mosquitoes and stuff in all of their parks and along all of the roads because of how many people are out there running and stuff. Because mm. you know, there's like a 300 people running group in that city. So yeah, and it's a pretty small place. So um, you know, it got it. It's to the point where like the running group will call the city and be like spray and they'll be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who, who better to tell you when there are lots of mosquitoes around? Yep. So like, I kind of got spoiled off of that mm. and we have like a, a pond with some koi fish at it, uh, in it, uh, on my back patio, mm-hmm. but because the water is moving, there's not as many, as many bugs you know because like it's stagnant water where they lay the eggs yeah yeah so, well, and then s- i have like citronella plants and stuff everywhere so <laughs> my city sends around like inspectors to like look and see if there's stagnant water on properties mm-hmm. like it's a they, they, they don't do the fogging but it's you know it's a it's a concern mm-hmm. yeah yeah huh. yeah I, I i did some lawn work as well i nearly let my ding dang house on fire Oh, no. Why, how did you do that with lawn work? Oh, were you burning leaves or something? I was very Doing confused. the flamethrower mowga- mowing grass <laughs> strategy? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, nobody nobody taught me how to do yard work. I'm a product of divorce. No. Um, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's uh, – uh, I was uh, – you went around. I filled up uh, uh, three wheelbarrows worth of sticks from trees you know like downed limbs in my uh you know that could come down over winter mm-hmm. and i was like okay i'll uh and i had i had some limbs from last last fall i just had them on my patio out behind my house so i was like okay i'll uh you know set these on fire here are my fire bowl that i have it's like a mobile fire pit kind of thing and i uh let's see here uh underestimated is it under or overestimated? The fire was too close to the other uh was too close uh-huh. to the other sticks that were laying uh-huh. on the patio. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so, you underestimated uh-huh. the distance? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I underestimated the you danger of having a fire that not on that, fire that, things that close. <laughs> yeah. It was too close to my stick trail that goes back to my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I built a little highway uh of sticks for a mini fire that I built outside straight to my bedroom because I, I like to tempt fate. I, I want to remember where I've been bread, breadcrumb wise, and right. so I just leave a little trail of gunpowder behind me. <laughs> <laughs> like a Looney Tune, yeah. Like and a true so, American. Yeah. yeah and so and so, I, so i saw this shit from my yard like catch a little bit of fire uh and i was like well fuck i'm dead but i picked up <laughs> I, I, okay yeah Didn't think this over cold. yeah I just, I, I just i just laid right down on it i was just like oh i built myself a <laughs> funeral pyre uh no i took a i took one of the larger limbs and i scattered the i, I scattered them <laughs> so they were not together and then i stomped out the individual embers and was very happy nobody was watching me so <laughs> yes fires are a, a big big bad yeah. i thought I, I thought that the 10 feet would be enough i paced it out it was not so dicey strategy by the way spreading out the fire in order to extinguish it <laughs> yeah. well i just what i wanted was if any if any individual stick was on fire i didn't want it to light the other ones on fire so i was like spread it out so it's isolated and See. also like push it away from the house 
So, Divide and conquer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you live and learn. That was a dumb thing that I did. And now it's public so everybody can hear. And it has no power over me because I, it's no longer a secret. So We if, didn't uh, shoot that into some content, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Your insurance will go up in a couple weeks. Don't Prop- worry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, my watch hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Martha from State Par- Farm is listening. I like State Farm. <laughs> Delicious. The rates are terrible, but it's yummy. <laughs> oh, man. How about you, Ben? What are you up to? Dude, nada. I uh, I don't know. I just did like chores. Had a boring weekend. I think I mentioned this in the pre-roll. It's warm enough that we could go outside in shorts today, so that's mm. really nice. And it's like light, super late now, so I'm happy about all those things. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for my vaccine. Uh, they bumped up when we could get it from May first to April fifteenth, so I'm excited about that. But even with that still like people who are eligible now are having a hard time finding appointments mm. so there's mm-hmm. you gotta gotta hustle if you want to get vaccinated yeah everything in its time mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah i forgot to mention uh i don't think i was i think this happened between the times that i was on the show okay um i was on monster dear monster podcast talking about the flight of dragons which is a 1982 rank and bass animated film that brings me great joy and is one of my favorite films. Mm. So uh, I talked about that old movie that like, although everybody knows Rankin and Bass, most people don't know what flight of dragons is because that one is just like, you know, uh, a weird, a weird one that was like <laughs> released straight to video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and it was like aired on TV uh, at a certain time and then just like disappeared from the planet. <laughs> but it's very good and don't don't look at the box art just google images of flight of dragons to see the gorgeous gorgeous artwork don't look Mm. at the box art because whoever did the box art did a terrible job and had like Mm. a vague impression of what um flight of dragons sort of kind of looked like and didn't get any of the actual aspects of the characters correct and the style is terrible i'll I'll show you guys it's bad yeah i only know about flight of dragons because of you Flight of Dragons is so so much my jam. So Yeah, but that's at uh that's that's at monsterdeer.monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good URL. Yes, it mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And um, a palindrome. No, it's it's totally not a palindrome. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um cool. Well, how do you all feel about doing the regular kind of show? What I with I feel like we should get it going yeah so why don't we do the uh the brief the multiplayer and nope that's the old one we haven't done that for about a year (laughs) let's do the grind the multiplayer and the end boss oh there's the art oh yeah that's a terrible cover i would not watch that yeah i know it's very bad like don't do not look at the terrible cover that they put on there it's (laughs) it's the worst uh i would watch the hell out of that i just have to be very high (laughs) It's oh. it's a lot, but like it's it's no. It's <laughs> and let's get started with the grind. The grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past period of time or so. Uh, Jala, it's been the longest since you've been here, so I will throw it to you first. Okie doke. So I've been playing a bunch of Ace Attorney Justice for All, which I won't talk about now because mm-hmm. that's for a bonus level. But I can talk about. The Chronicles of Riddick. I finished Escape from Butcher Bay and Assault on Dark Athena. So I finished out the rest of those games. Nice. Excellent. Very very excited to talk about that. So continuing on about uh, Escape from Butcher Bay, the biggest gameplay issue I had with it was that there isn't a lean and peek around the corner. Or if there is, it's like I didn't know because I was playing with controller and it was only telling me like the keyboard inputs. Oh, yeah. And so hmm. I, I have no idea. But anyway, um, this game is pretty much just a shooter. It starts with a little bit of sneaking, but then that very quickly falls off. Mm-hmm. The last third of the game is, in my opinion, less good than the rest. Yeah. And it ends with a pretty lame gasp. Uh, last time when, when I was doing it, I left off talking about how um, I had met Pope Joe, who did not do my shine job and made me very bitter. <laughs> this random lady in my head that said, you have been blind too long, and then gave me my shine job. 
And then I was in the cruise quarters. And then after that, uh, I got recaptured and sent to Double Max, where I infiltrated a mining facility. I tried to escape, and then I got caught again. And the bomb that I used to distract ended up causing Infinispawn aliens to come up out of the ground. And then Riddick's like, beautiful. Anyway, they were really, really fast. And it was very <laughs> frustrating to play this part. And then um, I was like in the middle of escaping from there. But then Johns finds me. And then I'm transferred to Triple Max, where I was put into cryo sleep. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you just put him there to begin with? You know how dangerous he is, you know, but whatever. So wait, Johns as a distinct entity from Pope John. Uh, Pope Joe. Ah, and Johns okay. is the bounty hunter guy who brought Riddick in, in the first place. Man, if we have like a super sci-fi universe, I expect more interesting names than Jim and John. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, there's many, there's many Johns in one. It is multiple Johns. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so then I was in triple max where I was put into cryo sleep and awakened each day for two minutes of exercise. This is the part that Dennis, you were saying was solitary. This is um, the only part of the game. I remember it was memorable, but it was very brief. And then I ended up like escaping in a pod of one of the other prisoners. And then I hijacked a big robo suit. And that was a lot of fun because you've been fighting these big robo suit guys like the whole mm -hmm. time that are hard to kill. And then you get to, you know, be one. I was really pissed though. Cause at one part in the game, I had to take one of those down and I ran through a doorway and then I killed it, but th by throwing a grenade at it, but it died in the doorway. And then I got stuck and I couldn't advance. Oh no! <laughs> I had to restart from a checkpoint because I couldn't move it and I couldn't get around it. And it was like a physical object. I, I could not, you know, just walk through it or jump over it and crouch or none of that. So that was fun. Huh? Uh, if, if there's a way to break it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so after I hijack the robo suit, I find my way to Hoxie, who is the prison box boss. And then Johns helps me dodge the guard robots in like the quote unquote final fight, which is really lame. Hmm. And then I trick them into killing Hoxie. And then Johns and I fly off in a stolen ship and say a bunch of recycled lines from Pitch Black. Okay. <laughs> and that's the end of that game. Right. So it was like, it was pretty solid. And then it was like, eh, it's all right, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not my favorite game, but like for the time period, it, I'm sure it was really, really good. Um, but still definitely the first part of the game was a lot better than as it progressed. That's what I remember is that it got like less special as it went along. You know, it yeah. went from you know, going around and talking to people in the prison yard to dodging rockets from big robots. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that gets really old really fast because then it's just like shooter, shooter, shooter. And Riddick very pointedly doesn't shoot stuff right. you know, in the movies. Like, that's not his thing. Yeah. You know, so it's like, this is so not Riddick. And then, like, he stops talking, too. There oh, no. stops being really a bunch of narrative or anything. And then as he stops talking and making his little snide one-liners. And so it's just kind of like, you know, random generic shooter man. Game. yeah so when it goes so. to the expansion or like you know semi-sequel kind of thing the assault from dark athena does it does it do a reset to something kind of more unique or does it kind of continue with the escalation uh i'll, I'll talk about that yeah so um i talking about assault on dark athena so first off it was developed by starbreeze studios i think the first game was Starbreeze and Tygon or yeah. something, or maybe it was just Tygon. I don't remember, but it was published by Atari. Um, they had made the game and then were trying to find a publisher for it. And so like, it took a while to get all of that worked out. It was released in 2009 and it looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does have that lean function, which I missed in Butcher Bay. Um, it was initially supposed to be a remake but then it ended up just becoming a sequel that picks up the story directly after what happens in Butcher Bay. Okay. So um, insofar as how the game plays, it's far sneakier for longer. Um, mm -hmm. oh, it good. has shadow mechanics that work a lot better than in the first game. Cause in the first game, you just kind of have to guess really if you are in the shadows or not. Like there's, I think there might be like some 
like maybe your reticle fades or something. I'm not really sure. Like a, but, like a blue um, pall over the screen kind of thing. That's Dark Athena. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so anyway, like uh, the skiff that Riddick and Johns are on at the end of Butcher Bay is caught and pulled in by a huge Merc ship uh, called the Dark Athena. And this recycles the beginning of Dark Fury, the animated Riddick film that's really film 1.5 between Pitch Black and Chronicles of Riddick. Okay. Um, the two of them were in cryosleep, and Riddick, of course, wakes up for no particular reason and happens to see that they are getting pulled in. And so Johns gets taken prisoner, but Riddick woke up and, like, is ready, so he escapes into the air vents. And then he finds like a little girl crawling around and living in the air vents. Who's like the daughter of one of the other prisoners or something. Um, you end up going to the prison cells, finding a bunch of different people that were captured. Uh, and then you get a bunch of fetch quests and stuff to do. Um, the first one is to kill somebody for like a, a gross man in the prison that you end up having to fight later. And uh, on the way, you fight some guy named Iron Lord, who's like one of the only bosses I remember because he kept on going Iron Lord or like something. <laughs> there was something where it's like maybe there were other people screaming "Get him, Iron Lord" or something like that. But you kept on hearing Iron Lord over and over again. So you're saying really... he had good branding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had really good branding, and it was just really annoying. So anyway, then you end up getting uh, an ally who helps you via consoles because he's like a tech dude. Um, so he's helping you from the prison cell because you got him a data pad. And so anytime you see a console, you can log in and talk to him. Um, and you end up fighting because like in the first game, you end up fighting soldiers and then guys in big robot suits. But in this game, you have drones, which are half human and half machine. Basically... Um, they take a human body, inject a bunch of tech magically like Borg, and then remove the mind and the will of the person so it can be puppeted and controlled around via like a little control room thing. Uh, and eventually you come across a med bay where there's some guys being turned into drones and they beg for you to kill them before the transformation happens and stuff. Um, yeah. So you get to see them like partially droned up. And then at one point in the game, you actually get to control drones and kill off a bunch of guards and stuff from one of the control rooms before they, you know, crack it open. So, and then come mm. after you, of course. But, uh, in either case, the weird gross guy that was in the jail that you had like to go kill somebody for him, like you end up fighting him later because after you freed all the prisoners, he ends up killing one of the people that's been helping you. And then He's just being weird and gross, talking about like doing gross things with the body and just he's really a lot. And yeah. All of his barks and everything are just bad. And <laughs> anyway, like you, you fight your way through the ship, through do through a bunch of different stuff. You take over a big mech again, just like you do in the first game. And then you end up trying to get to an escape pod. Your buddy, the tech guy, ends up getting killed before you can escape, of course. And you end up falling to a planet, um, which is like where the Dark Athena has been harvesting people to make drones. So it's like everything is a ghost town because that's where they've been taking the bodies from. Mm. And then you have to like fight your way back to the ship because you don't want to be marooned there forever. And then you have to do your like final fight against the owner of the Dark Athena or whatever. And you drop her down an elevator shaft. And that's the same thing you do to some other boss earlier in the game. Like, all the bosses are lame in this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, like, the thing about it is, like, you fight this boss at the end of the game, but you had fought her right before you take the little skiff and, like, leave and then crash land into the planet. And, like, when you're fighting her right before you crash land into the planet... You stab her in the neck with a hairpin that you stole from her, and somehow she's still talking <laughs> and still uh, able to like uh, walk around and do stuff, even uh, though she just got stabbed through the throat. But whatever. Did, did, so, did, did you stab through the front? A small hairpin. Did you explicitly go through the talking meat? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it's. 
graphics from. Feel like oh. anywhere you get stabbed in the neck, you're probably not going to be talking too well after. It's not going to be. Should it be? Yeah. It's not going to be one right, of your well, best remind days. Remind me not to tell you about my neck piercing. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyway, at the very very end. The little girl who, by the way, gets like these magical tech powers. She's like talking about everybody in terms of, oh, the monsters are back. But then at the end of the game, somehow she knows how to do tech. And she's like, I know how to turn all the drones against you know, or to turn the monsters against each other or something. Hmm. And it's like, OK, so she can barely process what these things are. But she somehow knows how to control whatever, whatever. <laughs> but then like after you kill the bad guy, like the the villain or whatever, she pops up and she's like, is she coming back? And then Riddick has the worst line in the game. And he's like, when I say goodbye, it's forever. Because, you know, you have to have that really long Vin Diesel Riddick pause. <laughs> you know? Like, they have uh, commas in all of the texts where it's just very specifically, there's a comma because that's where he pauses all the time. <laughs> I, I anyway, and then the credits roll. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I see the theory that, that Vin Diesel actually has narcolepsy and is falling asleep <laughs> while he's acting, and everyone thinks it's just dramatic emphasis. Right? Oh. I don't know. Well, anyway, so um, this game, on that note, was critically acclaimed for the voice work and the use of shadows. So I already hmm. mentioned the shadows, but it's also well acclaimed and well received, or it was at the time for the voice work. Yeah. So, whatever um the ai is kind of jank and it was even criticized when it was extant because you can be spotted even if you haven't been seen by the guards at all and personal complaint for me is the big robo suit guys have grenades which have super ridiculous splash damage Ooh. and you don't have enough cover or speed to really dodge it that well so you end up inevitably taking a bunch of hits trying to fight those things yeah um and also, it has a lot of super macho, misogynist lines from all the mercs, including the female leader of everybody, Merc. Um, okay. And yeah, she says that it's feminist, so. <laughs> I guess. But anyway, I, while I understand that this is the kind of thing that people who have rough lines of work would say, it's also still a lot, given the fact that I'm playing it with 2021 brain. I mean, a lot yeah. has changed since 20 or 2009, so... It's hard you know, to turn off 2021 brain. It is. And like, just boy, it's everywhere in this game. So like, yeah. if, if anybody listening to this is like, oh boy, I want to go back and play those games. Just be aware. You're going to hear a lot of like bad misogynist macho language from like everybody. Yeah. So. Huh. That's all I got to say about that. I mean, like it was, it was pretty fun. I mean, I still say that it's probably like the Dark Athena is also probably longer than it needs to be. And nothing gameplay wise really stands out super well other than the part where you get to take over the drones. And like once one of them gets killed, you can just bring another one out and keep killing soldiers. Yeah. That was pretty fun. But like that's about the only thing that I got from that. So, yeah. So was this part of like a grand we're going to follow all of the adventures of John Riddick kind of media quest that you were doing? Richard B. Riddick. Excuse oh, you. sorry. Forgot the alliteration. <laughs> I just took a guess. Yeah. <laughs> to give H. John Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, Dick B. Riddick. Yes. Oh, geez. So yes. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, yes, it was, uh, because eventually I will be on Monster Deer Monster to discuss ah, yes. Riddick and right. uh, the kind of entire franchise. Uh, we've read the novelizations, we've watched all the movies except the very last one, and we, now we have played the games, so... Nice. You know, that's yeah. a thing. Then we can talk about the monster inside. <laughs> In my <laughs> eyes. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's all I got. The strange era so of shooters I, to go back I, to. I have to know, did the when I say goodbye, it's forever line come back at some point? Like when, when uh, Vin Diesel and the girl split up? Like I uh, feel like that's got to be called back, right? Well, you see, that was the end. It faded to credits after that. So uh. like... And it, it was not recycled in the movies. Now, um, the Dark Athena game came out 10 days before Chronicles of Riddick came out okay. in theaters. So... Um, you know, like it's kind of, or is it, is it Dark Athena or was it Butcher Bay? It might've been Butcher Bay. It might've been Butcher Bay that came out before Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah, but anyway, Chronicles of Riddick came out yeah, earlier. Chronicles of yeah. Riddick came out in like 2004, so it must've been Butcher Bay. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, Dark Athena was made after that movie. And then it was like 50 million years until they made Riddick. That was like 2017, I want to say. Right. Um, that's the final movie in the set. And so like enough time had passed, like eight years, that nobody took lines from that old video game. <laughs> yeah. so. Wasted opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just... <laughs> You mentioned something that you just, okay, so at one point they say, you're a bad prisoner. We're going to put you in cryo sleep. That never, that, that is such a weird punishment to me. And it pops up in sci-fi a lot. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. oh, we're, we're going to, we're going to make it so you don't experience the passage of time. The worst part of being in prison. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, like in this case, they're just trying to keep him from making trouble. So if you put yeah. him in cryo sleep, he can't do anything. So right, you know, huh. it's, that it's bad sense. when real life is scarier than your science fiction. Yes, <laughs> right. Triple Texas, max. We're just gonna kill you. Yeah. yeah. No. There's no, no no worries. Actually, all worries. Oh, please, people worry about this. Oh, yeah. uh, huh. Cool. Well, Let's did talk you have about any... something else now, other yeah. than very old Riddick games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll ask you. So I am. I'm nearing the end of case two in Justice for All. Um, uh-huh. Where are you at? I'm in the last case. I'm like last on case. day two of the last case. Cool. 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 So. Cool. 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 All right. Yeah. So you've already done the d- done the circus. Yes. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Which is yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Cool. Uh. So let me think here. Who? Uh. It ben. Hey Ben. What? Uh. What? What? What have you been playing? I think I got a short week this week. I've uh. As I think as promised last week, I've been playing Loop Hero like off and on a little bit. Uh. But I think I'm approaching like my end with that game. It's like uh, it feels like a bit grindy at this point. Mm-hmm. Where well, uh, wait, if if you're approaching the end, are you also just getting started? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's like a tool album. Let's. I think I I'm starting to resonate with the black darkness that, that you see at the beginning of every level. Oh, no. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't. Know. Um. So I like I looked some stuff up online. Like once I thought that I was close to the end to see if there was anything that I was like missing, and for, as far as like combinations of like events and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think I've gotten most everything. The only thing that I found since then that wasn't that I hadn't seen mentioned was. If you have a library and you have aliens, the aliens will start to read books after a while, but then you can kill them and get items off them. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. (laughs) It hardly makes sense to me, but (laughs) you get loot, so it's cool. Um, The librarian. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. good. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, so I don't know how much there is to say about that game anymore. It's um, I've un- I've unlocked River Tiles, but even that, uh, I'm not exactly sure how they work. Like the description of them say that uh, like the effects of tiles next to them are doubled, but I will put tiles on the other side of the map that aren't even connected to River Tiles, and their effects still doubled. At least it says it in text. Oh, weird. So I don't know if and I and I yeah. So I I'm not sure. There's some like weird stuff with that. Yeah, so I don't know. I it, it, like the strategy feels kind of samey, so I'm not sure. Maybe I'll watch like some streams of it and see if there's mm. like better strategies that I'm just not thinking of. Yeah, but um, yeah. So when you're when you're into the territory where you can't tell if it's a glitch or a bug or an intended strategy, you've probably maxed out uh, <laughs> the fun of the game. Yeah, which I'm a little bit disappointed by, or it's like, because I, I know a lot of people who've been playing it are kind of the same people who play Slay the Spire, but it doesn't feel like it has the same sort of depth as that. It has like, it has like quicker, like RPG kind of build options or whatever, or you kind of get through a run more quickly. Um, but the choices that you make feel less deliberate. Um, like, it seems like you kind of go in with a singular strategy. So like... Um, with the warrior, you just go for vampirism so you can heal yourself. With the necromancer, you just go for attack speed so that you can get as many skeletons on the board as possible. And then, yeah, like up your max skeletons. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm on the fourth stage. So I've, I've beaten the first three bosses, and I think that's where it ends because there's not any space in the main menu for another stage to be there. There is space for another class to go there, but I don't think there's another class be- besides the three that I've unlocked, so I'm not sure about that. Um, and then the other piece, too, is like to unlock some of the buildings that I haven't unlocked yet, 
Um, the items, the description of the items are kind of vague, and it seems like they're randomly dropped, but I'm not sure how to make them, like, drop more frequently. Um, so, like, you know, like an item description will be like, it, you know, an item distilled from the nothingness of space as it drifts apart. And it's like, all right, that's sweet, but uh, how do I get that? <laughs> like, how do I, <laughs> Please. how do I increase the chance of getting that thing so I can progress in the game? Um, and I, and I honestly, I don't know. I, it, it seems like it's seemingly random right now, but um, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Loop Hero. Anyway. Yeah. So loop Hero. What new system will you optimize? Um, so I think what I want to talk about, well, I'm going to, I'm going to exit the loop. I'm going to break the loop hero conversation. Of things. <laughs> I don't, cause I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to play it as much. I might play it as if like, I'm looking for a casual game to play for like an hour or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but I think I do want to talk about something I've been playing instead is I've been playing, uh, they have cube on uh, magic arena, which they've only done a couple of times in the past. Um, but that's something I've been playing a lot over the weekend. What, what, what um, is this? I'm sorry. So magic if, arena. Yeah. So magic arena is how I play magic online. Uh, there's also a thing called magic online that people play magic online with um, okay <laughs> but but it's it's basically what the, uh wizards of the coast is trying to make to make it i guess uh like an update basically because the old magic online was made like i don't know uh this actually ties into what i want to talk about later for the weekly story but uh it, it was made around the same time that space jam website was made uh, <laughs> so it's like it has that sort of look to it and but it's the idea is it's very ugly but it works and they have all these cards supported for it for like the last like 20 years and a lot of people still use it um so that's why they haven't really deprecated it but they made a thing called magic arena like i don't know three or four years ago um as as like a way to try and start shifting customers over to that and it it, 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 it like it, it looks like it's made in unity sort of thing and it's like has yeah. a fresh face to it and that sort of thing um but it's very much like a kind of like it, not exactly pay to play but it's like you know they have economies that you can buy if you want to do drafts online or you know or you can like grind and over the course of time and like do like a draft every week or something like that yeah, yeah. um but it's an updated version, so they don't have the full card support. They only have like cards supported for like the last like two or three years, maybe. And then they like have like random ones that they've added. But there's like I, I you know, programming magic is a very difficult thing, I imagine. And so yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know how they can't really do that sort of thing overnight. Is what I'm trying mm. to get at, I guess. But a um, lot of uh, but anyway, a lot of special cases and individual cards and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and so there's a lot of things to account for. So I think their solution is they, there's just some cards they just straight up just don't allow, or they don't have programmed just because like the interactions are weird. Yeah. Um. Anyway, all this is going back to um. So they normally like have drafts that you can do of whatever the current rotation of cards are on the website. Um. But they have a thing called cube draft, which is where um for anyone who doesn't know, cube draft is the thing you, thing you can do in person or you can do it online. But you building a, I don't know, I don't, I forget what the etymology for a cube is. I think people say that it's like the five colors plus colorless, and it's like, oh, six things. Cube has six sides. Okay. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's basically a collection of cards that you draft from, and they're typically higher power cards. Um, I've done it uh, in person a few times, mm -hmm. and if you meet people who have like an impressive cube set, it's really sweet because it's like you play with these like dual lands or whatever that costs like crazy amount of money, and it's, you feel very. Uh, scared shuffling your cards and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, but no, it's um, a card payment. <laughs> but it, yeah. But it, it's cool to play online because you get these really like high power decks. And so you get these like really like runaway synergies. Um, and, and, and so it's a much more interesting like drafting experience. Like if you draft like the regular like set that's out, you know, usually there's like a lot of filler cards, but the first two or three picks might be really interesting. Mm -hmm. But in this, it's kind of like there's a lot of different directions you can go. You can make decks that are really flexible. You can do like five color stuff, um, that sort of thing. Uh so it's it's been a lot of fun to play. Um yeah. And uh, like the way they have it is you play to either seven wins or three losses. And like I, I've been happy with the fact that like you can go pretty I think I'm like I've probably played like maybe ten or twelve drafts, and I'm maybe like down two thousand coins or something like that, which okay. is uh, a draft costs like four thousand coins. So like I'm pretty like stable like drafting at it and like getting like getting enough wins to get back, which is like I think nice. five wins or something like that. Hmm. Um, 
so yeah so i don't i don't know how much to talk about it i don't know how like inside baseball magic is or how much are you are you playing this with people that you know or is this kind of being match uh match made against uh like a like a pool of people with yeah, it's all the random people. Resources. So okay, cool. the the other thing that, that that's interesting about the arena is like you have two different types of drafts. They um you can draft against like bots that will just pick random cards. And they added this like I think within I think they added this about exactly a year ago. Is you can draft with humans. Okay. Um, and so the cube draft you draft with humans, and so which is slightly preferable because it's like um the way the bots draft is like not not necessarily great like they have kind of like preconceived notions of what the card values are and so like there's certain cards that'll be like way undervalued and you just draft those that sort of thing and then everyone kind of plays the same deck but with human drafts it's a lot better like the signals that you see are like you can actually draft around signaling and stuff like that um so it, it does make for a, I think a more fun experience with the drafting and cool. then yeah you play random people you just get paired up against people the way arena works is they'll pair people up who have like like who have like records and pretty sure they pair people up who have like like decks because okay. usually the decks you play against are somewhat similar to yours. Huh. Um, it's very much like a conspiracy theory sort of thing, but I think that's kind of what they do to kind of equalize it, right? Like, um, anyway, uh, what else? Uh, they also, yeah, 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 I think that's it. Cool. Um, yeah, they also do a thing too where they they have a there's one algorithm they do where it's like they try and do land smoothing where they'll draw two hands for you and they give you the one with the better mana base to it instead of like instead of to try and make it like better so like the idea is like you don't draw seven cards and it's like zero lands it's like okay well i guess i'll automatically mulligan so i kind of like yeah i was gonna say is that before your option to mulligan or yeah yeah interesting that's something they do behind the scenes yeah which is interesting so, but yeah. you could still mulligan after that. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, it's huh. uh, there's kind of like a weird crossover with like playing this with like what I, the work that I did in the casino industry, where it's like <laughs> you feel this like slight hand of like manipulation behind the scenes sort uh-huh. of thing. Um, and so I, I, I don't like that sort of thing, or I don't like being like controlled or anything like that. Right, so, right. Yeah, it's all, also knowing that the human mind is a pattern finding machine, and so you're probably constantly overestimating how, um, you know, bespoke these things are. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, the draft draft is fun. Yeah, <laughs> you can make some fire decks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and like a lot of things are supported. You can make decks where you like mill people out. You can make decks where everything gets a bunch of counters and you win. Yeah, um, yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Did you have anything else? That's all I got. Okay. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah. Um, I have uh, an update on two games that I've talked about before. Uh, the first is Valheim. And, oh, uh, yeah. If you, if you remember, it was just kind of like a, a random shit doing simulator for me because uh, I'm on a server where people people are pretty good about um, you know doing the actual game. You had uh, you um, had one job and you nearly uh, you nearly screwed it up for everybody. I know, I know. <laughs> um, but uh, this time we all came together for one job, which was slaying one of the bosses. So I finally got to participate in a boss fight. Cool, sweet. Um, and it was awesome. So it's I think the third boss of the game. It's a giant slime monster coming out of the swamp. Um, and the whole thing had this like, um, you know, MMO rating energy to it. Yeah. Uh, and there, you know, there's only, I think there were four of us on, on, on the server at the time. Um, uh, maybe three, I can't remember, but you know, it's, it was a, it was a long fight. This thing had a massive health bar. Um, and you know, we were all just kind of, we, we had to coordinate around like drawing it to certain areas that were safe for us to be in. Um, because you know, if you start fighting this thing too much on its home turf, there's just so much other dangerous stuff around that, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, a death wish. Um, but so kind of kiting it around and, and managing it's, uh, it had a poison ability. So managing that, um, and, and just kind of coordinating together. Uh, so we, we did have to coordinate all that stuff, but it was never so intense that you couldn't, didn't feel like you were just kind of hanging out if that makes any sense. Like yeah. it was not edge of your seat. Like, Oh my God, yeah, you gotta go here. A, B, C, you know, uh-huh. uh, it was, it was just kind of enough to do, uh, to, to make it really fun to hang out and, and still be able to talk about whatever the hell you felt like. So, 
Um, it didn't feel like a job. Didn't feel like a job. Mm-hmm, didn't didn't mm-hmm. feel like um, a super intense boss. Felt like a boss you wanted to hang out with. <laughs> it was, uh, like, it was it, a lot it, of fun. It was not a situation where there was one person who most of the work for uh, organizing things like fell onto, and mm-hmm. you did not necessarily feel uh, pressured to uh, perform so that their efforts wouldn't go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you did die like that, it, that almost felt like part of it. We, we had a, a portal set up to right where we were fighting the boss. So if you died, you spawn back at home and you just walk through the portal. Uh, now you won't have any equipment, but we, we kind of had um, chests in our home area with kind of backup equipment. Um, and you would take just enough to get you back to your grave site where you died uh, pick up your equipment from that and then continue the fight. But if, you know, if someone died, then everyone else's job was lure the boss away from where they died while this other person kind of ran back, got their mm. equipment. Yeah. Um, it, we were probably closer to spiraling into a loss um, than we realized. Cause you know, if at any point you have all three people die at once, you're just kind of screwed. So why? Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, that was, uh, you know, there, there was some uh, intensity there, some, some stakes, um, but we worked really well together. We we got the thing uh, on on the first go. Uh, not too many not too many deaths. Not too many times we had to do that. Uh, kind of kite the boss away so someone could come back. Um, and it felt very rewarding to to take this thing down over time. Um, the kind of interesting organic thing that happened while we were fighting it is um, we had our base on this little island, um, and and then kind of the the boss was on the mainland. But as we had to kite it and as, um, you know, we, we just had different things happening, the boss somehow Godzilla style waded out into the bay what? Uh, <laughs> between the island and the mainland. And then for a little bit, it was like, we can't do any damage because we, you know, we can't fight it while swimming and was it's it... deep enough that we can't get to it. And our arrows don't do really any damage against it. Was it recovering? Um, thankfully it did not get back health. One of the person or, or one of the people, um, rating it, uh, had said they tried it on their own before. And like, if you leave it alone for too long, it will, uh, start regenerating health. Okay. Um, so that was a danger, but we, we fortunately had enough arrows to, to kind of plink it and, and stop that from happening. Okay. However, like just the, the, like, okay, how do we convince this thing to leave the water? <laughs> It was a very interesting <laughs> decision. Like it, it almost felt strategic on the boss's part. Like I was like, there's, if I was like trying to program AI, knowing this was the arena we were going to fight in, this is what I would have it do. Like, this is the big brain play. Um, but there's no way that people could have known that, you know, this procedural game would create these kind of circumstances and where we'd set up our base. Um, so it's just kind of a funny, funny little, um, midsection to the fight where we're less worried about killing it and more worried about getting it to where we can kill it uh so that was fun it was like the uh it was like the christmas truce in world war yeah. one yeah <laughs> it's like, let's, let's take a break and play some soccer <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> play some slime soccer uh there were there were plenty of uh balls of slime rolling around so yeah, we, yeah. we had our own version of that what um, was yeah, the like what was the reward for beating this thing so the reward was, uh, I forget what it was called, but it was the boss drops a, a unique item, um, a couple of unique items, actually. One of them is a wishbone. Um, and if you equip it, it's like a divining rod that lets you know when you are near precious metals under the ground. Ooh. Um, so like systems progression of the game, um, you know, we had found iron up to that point. Uh, this divining rod or this wishbone let us find silver, which is always, you know, kind of completely underground. Yeah. Um, and, and mine silver. Uh, that also required going to a new region. So the mountain biome is where you get silver from. Um, but going there without this, this uh, wishbone would be kind of uh, very difficult because you, you'd essentially have to kind of plow around in the ground and see. You'd be you casting something. about blind. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was cool. Um, we also got this kind of, uh, item from the boss that is a buff so you equip this uh, other item that gives you a one-time buff and you can have one of these um equipped at a time you get one from each boss um so this one just uh boosted your resistances uh, as you were fighting um so kept that on me that's since that's the one boss i've done that's the one i have 
Um, although I shouldn't say that. So after we beat this slime boss, we were just kind of derping around. Um, and someone was like, oh, you want to summon one of the original bosses? So you can see that. So we went and you can resummon um, bosses. Okay. Although, of course, at this point we were leveled up enough. Um, we summoned the first boss and downed it almost immediately. Um, but it was kind of just fun to see it. You know, it's a big, cool design. Like, um, think if if uh, a HP Lovecraft did a deer. Um, that's what this <laughs> boss was. Okay. Uh, so you know, we we downed that, uh, and then and then I think we reached peak Valheim, where after fl- slaying that second boss, we were, we were kind of standing on the hillside where we fought it, and someone's like, "Oh, hey, see that rock? You know, all the way across the valley there? Oh yeah. All right, first person to hit that with an arrow wins, and we just start shooting arrows at literally <laughs> a rock." <laughs> I was like, okay, no, no, I got that one. The tree <laughs> next to the rock is the next one. And we, you know, we spent another 15 minutes just hanging out yeah, shooting yeah. virtual arrows at trees in Valheim. And it was wonderful. It's it's like what you would do if you're with some buddies out in the woods and you had a gun. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Um the, so this uh, this game occupies, you know, I, I've never had a Minecraft server that went anywhere, but I imagine kind of that kind of just casual pick a random thing to do hanging out um is is very much kind of the space that valheim film uh, that, that's right that's why this feels familiar to me mm-hmm. yeah that, it, it hits that spot really well um and in a time of covid that is sorely needed yeah yeah uh last just fun story from that i, I wasn't there for it but um you know a, a friend who's now mining silver uh, I was talking with him before the show and he's like, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm out on the mountain and there are these giant, you know, stone golems that will attack you on the mountain. Um, I got one trapped down in the pit where I'm mining silver and now I can bait it into attacking me and bash the silver out of the rock uh, way faster <laughs> than I could nice. with my own pickaxe. Okay. So found a, found a creative way to mine silver. Hmm. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to bait in a golem every time we do that, but it's a, a creative use. Yeah. An enemy in that game it's worth trying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah that's uh that's Val- valheim um continues to be a good time highly recommend um just for just for the hanging of the out cool <laughs> what uh what else you got uh then I've, I've also been going strong on hades yes and uh the my praise for this continues i have since uh, beat the game, uh, or at least, you know, beat the final boss for the first time. Uh, and just today beat it for a second time. And I'm really, really impressed by how they kind of weave that beating of the final boss into the story of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this from the beginning, it's clear that they, they were making this roguelike with um, story at the forefront uh, and the way that they handled that final fight and what comes after uh, just shows how much uh, story is woven into every piece of this game so um it was a very poignant moment hmm. um especially for a game that you know kind of plays up you um you know having conflict with your dad and and kind of being at odds and sniping at each other the entire game uh it just it it feels like there's a very earnest moment in there that is earned um and and then of course the the reunion after that your entire motivation for getting out of hades is to go find your mom and you get to see what happens there uh and that's very poignant and earned as well so nice um you know the the whole ethos of of the pantheon of greek gods just being this huge family drama um is is very holds very true in this game and works very well for storytelling so that's been fun i've not played that moment but i've listened to the music of that moment so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. continue yep. ben i'm sorry what uh strategies did you end up using to beat the boss yeah so the first time i i used your initial sword and got a whole bunch of buffs on the special for it which is like an area of effect mm-hmm. uh damage including there's there's one upgrade that makes it like a lunge mm-hmm. uh instead of a in place thing which just gives you great mobility um and so the the combo that kind of worked really well for me was I would I would use the lunge to get in, deal a crap ton of damage, uh, and then had my dashes to get out. And I had some kind of upgrade on my dashes that would debuff Hades on my way out. Um, so that that worked for me the first time around. Second time around was actually with the bow and arrow. Mm. Um, and I don't know if I had anything. Oh, I had I had the mean beams on that. I had <laughs> uh, so one of one of the upgrades for your ranged shot um instead of firing an arrow 
and this is by the way not an arrow from your bow and arrow you can have bow and arrow and then you have what do you call it your cast i guess you shoot a red diamond yeah i, I don't think it ever explains what those are right that's your cast doesn't need to be your cast yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't 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 think about it too much um i think it might be blood i think it's blood i think probably blood, blood. I feel you probably it's usually blood. usually not words you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pro- yeah, probably blood. Yeah, whatever. You know. um, but so so instead of firing an arrow, you just kind of drop it on the ground, and it fires a beam of ice at the nearest enemy um, that kind of tracks with it. And so basically, I I had powered that up and just ran away from Hades while my ice beams, my mean beams, uh, took him down. Yeah. So those are, those are my two wins. Nice. I I hardcore thought that the shield was going to be the first weapon I beat it with, just because I really really like it. But um, I haven't I haven't even gotten close with that yet. So it's it's kind of interesting. I, I, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like there's two games, um, which is kind of the lead up to the final boss, where you're just you know you're kind of cruising through everything and building your character for than the second part, which is the final boss fight. Right. Um, and it's almost like the, you know, the first one doesn't really bear mentioning. It's all about, you know, what did you do to get past the one part of the game that's actually hard now? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know if you guys agree with that or. No, that, that that's, that, 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 that has been my experience with roguelites that I have done before where it's like mm-hmm. eventually, you know, the run up to, the final boss or the last stage is really just an extended like character creation <laughs> kind of thing where yeah. it's like, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just roll. I'm ro- I'm rolling this to see what options that I have uh, to get up here. Yeah. And honestly, that's, that's kind of illuminated. I think what I like about roguelikes almost to being able to get rid of anything else, which is I like procedural character creation. Yeah. Like procedural upgrade trees. Give me that. And I literally, there's nothing else in roguelikes that I, I not feel has merit, but like I, I can leave anything else. Super giant is exceptionally good at giving you those choices and making them feel meaningful. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, the one other game that I've sunk time into is transistor. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I remember correctly, that one is not a roguelike format, right? No, no. Uh, okay. That one is uh, all handmade. Uh, But, I mean, it still does the thing that you like, (laughs) Mm -hmm, which is, mm -hmm. you know, kind of give you those, you know, meaningful A-B choices. Not quite as explicitly as Bastion does or as Pyre does, but you're still, you know, kind of constantly reevaluating things and thinking about not just, you know, your affinities for the way that you play, uh, but also weaknesses that you could shore up. Mm -hmm. Well, they're they're really good at making uh, mechanics that are like orthodox another where it's like yeah i kind of what you're mentioning with the ab where it's like if you have both these things and the combination is like a lot better than the individual things yeah yeah and there's there's some uh reward for mastery there at least familiarity where okay you know the first time i saw this i didn't know that it would be good with the thing i'd see later so i skipped it (laughs) my second time around now i kind of have a better understanding of what options i might see and so seeing it again is much more exciting yeah um and that, that feels good Um, but suffice to say, I, even though I've now beat the game, quote unquote, I I very much feel like I'm at the beginning of it in terms of, um, you know, getting into the meat of the story and then, um, doing a bit of reading online, the, the packs of punishments, uh, punishment is another thing that's unlocked where you can kind of voluntarily make your run harder to get more rewards. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the game is very much focused around increasing, uh, that. Which again, all all worked into the story, all all kind of um, very diegetic, mm-hmm. and and I appreciate that. Yeah. So, <laughs> nothing like setting a rogue like in hell. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> then anything goes. Yeah. Now that's another uh, super giant thing. The uh, kind of the mutators or modifiers taking mm-hmm. uh um you know once you're comfortable enough with the game taking very specific disadvantages to get other advantages uh what i'm saying is super giants a very good studio they know what they're doing i appreciate yeah. it yeah so um yeah that's that's my time with hades uh i'm trying to think of anything else major or any other highlights um but it's yeah it's it's been good it's you know it's the kind of game i 
single player wise, like I, I can just pick up for 10 minutes, I can pick up for 20 minutes or I can play it all whole night. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's good to have that flexibility. You're playing this on switch or PC playing it on PC. Gotcha. Okay. Um, with a, with a PS4 controller. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that mm-hmm. makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else? Think. Valheim, Hades, Valheim and Hades. That's it. Valheim. Both, both afterlifes. Uh, funny enough. True enough. Yeah. <laughs> Sensing a yeah. theme. I don't have anything that's explicitly an afterlife. Um, I'm still coming off of the really rough um, uh, assignment play that I've been doing. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, I've just kind of, you know, gummed at the edges of some things. You know, newer things like on the Switch and stuff, but I don't feel that I've played enough of any of them to be really especially comfortable. So my section's going to be pretty short here. Uh, what I have done is I have started streaming Pathologic, uh, mm-hmm. which Ooh. I figured would always be. I always figured that would be the thing that I would do if I was going to end my streaming career, which is start <laughs> streaming this hateful non game that is nothing but text. And also it's like if you are playing a sim in a world where God was crueler than a Sims player is, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's definitely a thing, but like pathologic is one of my favorite games ever. It's so good and so artful and so masterful. And the, the story and themes and mechanics all weave together so well, it's not possible to win. You just have to lose uh, in the way that hurts the fewest people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. So I've started, I, I like, I, I mentioned that offhand, like jokingly a couple of weekends ago when I was streaming and people were like, Oh yeah, I would totally, I would totally watch that. People were afraid to play it on their own for the reasons that I just mentioned that it is, huh. you know, it's, <laughs> I think it was in like the WAF that we did about pathologic where it's like, Oh, this is the best game I would recommend nobody ever play. Right. <laughs> and so yep. there were, you know, enough people in stream chat were like, oh, yeah, no, that's not a bad idea. We, I would totally watch that, you know, do pathologic as a service. So I was like, fuck it, man, cut him up. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's do it. OK. Uh, and that's what I did. So this past weekend, I did the first day of pathologic on Hexcrank Live. And it was a good time. And it reminded me of all the stuff that I love about this really off putting and very specific and loudly stated video game (laughs) (laughs) so i've been having a really good time do i need to describe what pathologic is i don't know what it is yeah pathologic is a game it originally came out um here in america i believe in 2005 it's made by a russian studio called ice pick lodge uh, the initial translation was really bad, and it received very limited distribution, so it was a cult hit, a cult favorite for a while until it received kind of uh, the definitive version, the classic uh, HD version that got a better translation. Uh, mm. This takes place uh, in an unnamed town in the Russian steppe uh, sometime either during or before World War One. Uh, you play as uh, one of three characters. They are three different healers of various sorts who arrive at this unnamed town that uh, has its own very specific folkways and customs uh, and uh, ruling families and things like that. And you arrive on the eve of a horrible plague breaking out. Uh, the, sa- the sand pest, the sand plague, uh, Shabnak Adir, uh, you know, it, it, it's symptoms are fi- so violent that, that some people think that they're like monsters coming in from off the step and tearing people apart hmm. and is, go ahead. Is this a historical thing or is that part complete fiction? The plague part? It's, it's, it's complete fiction. Uh, like right. everything here is incredibly mystical and, you know, straight up like meta textual as well. There are characters, uh, who show up in like theater garb, uh, who address you as the player, but also as the character. Um, there is basically Hmm. no fourth wall in this. It's an incredibly literary game. Um, it is a game where people will lie to you, uh, gleefully actually. Uh, and everything is, uh, operating on this extremely surreal, uh, theatrical kind of level in the way that people talk to you as you go about doing your daily quests over these 12 days, uh, while you are moving about this town, 
uh, fighting the rapid deterioration of your um, of your health bars. Uh, so your hunger, your, uh, your immune system, your infection level, your exhaustion, uh, things like that. Uh, in addition to your health, uh, scrounging around in trash cans to find things that you can like trade to kids for little things that you can sell to people in stores. No, this oh, is like, kids so, so, with uh, weird masks on. Yeah. <laughs> kids with weird masks and, you know, like donkey heads and stuff, or even just like little kids, like somebody in the chat was like, I love this game. I, I can't describe it to anybody because you spend most of your time uh, trading needles to little girls for heroin. but no it's like because of the because of the customs in the town sharp objects are forbidden so like you you know you find like needles and razors in the in the trash kids covet these things and they'll give you you know a bullet here a bullet there you know you find bottles that you can fill up with waters to give to drunks for bandages which you which you can then sell you know for you know to one person for like a different uh kind of uh you know, painkiller, which the, you can sell to a different kind of store to get the kind of thing that you need. And over the course of the game, over the 12 days, the economy changes depending on like huh. what stage of lockdown <laughs> the, 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 the town is in. So we've had too much heroin. We're not interested in that anymore. I mean, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But like day one, you have, you know, if you're if you're new and you have no idea how bad things are going to get, like you look at the you walk into a store and say, like, why would I spend 150 rubles on a loaf of bread? And it's like, oh, you sweet, you sweet summer child. Bread is going to cost five times that. Buy as much as you can now and sell it later <laughs> at a profit because you're going to you're going to need antibiotics. The system makes makes yeah. you uh, more excited the second time you see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm just having a grand old time playing this miserable, miserable game that when we did it, uh, when we did it on did it on Waff, it resonated more with me than Gary, although he admires it. But it's like this game is a pit and it's warm and it's comfortable and I want to live there in this <laughs> fucking pit of despair. It's amazing. Um <laughs> I remember so, the chat getting to the point where everybody's like, I want to live in the pit. I want to live in the pit. And everybody's yep. talking about living in the pit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This reminds me of the game that we covered like way back when, when we had the developer on where they were talking about like you know, D level your characters to like deal with oh, aging, like as an yeah. allegory for that. It sounds like this, <laughs> but a little bit. Like, <laughs> choose which health bar to decrease. Mm-hmm. Hold on. It, Help me understand this because I, I found Pathologic was on Kickstarter uh, in 2020, and so was that just an adaptation of it then? Or? So I don't know about 2020. They did kickstart a couple of years ago, uh, Pathologic Two, um, which is it's confusing. So Pathologic Two, it's not necessarily a sequel, but it's not necessarily a remake either. They said it's kind of like the jump huh. from Silent Hill One to Silent Hill Two. So it we've conser- got our sea legs. Now we're gonna really fuck your shit up. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Pathologic One it ships with three stories. Pathologic Two came out, I believe, in 2019, and it only has one of the stories. Uh, and they're going to be adding more in uh, later on. Uh, but Pathologic yeah. Two, it's a little bit um, not friendlier because no version of Pathologic can be friendly, but it's um, kind of more mechanically modern, let's say. Um. And uh, a little bit more approachable. And from what I saw, the translation is even better than the updated translation of Pathologic HD Classic, uh, which is already really good. Like, this is uh, just, like, such a good, such a literary game that I've... You know, since I initially played it, it, had a little bit of like a like a like a hankering for like you know stories and stuff that are like it. So like there are Reddit threads with books that are like you know, people are like oh yeah this book is kind of like this. So I've just kind of been seeking it out like depressing stories about about living in Eastern Europe and plagues and stuff. Huh. Yeah. So I mean, this is really interesting. I, I'm I'm looking at this Kickstarter page for it, um, and it just looks like it's the, there's no mention of we've done this before this is a remake or anything like that it raised 330 plus thousand dollars yep so that is not a small amount nope um but it's also oh last updated mark okay last updated not closed yes Ooh, okay Solve yeah my own no. mystery there no the the, ah. the it, it closed like in um the like 2018 2017 yeah. something like that yeah okay 
Yep. Oh, cool cool that uh kickstarter was a part of making this reality yeah yeah they they, they went to the fans and fans are like yep yeah, thumbs up cool uh COVID yes, was pretty please. bad for them uh as it is for a lot of uh studios and stuff but apparently they put pathologic 2 on games pass uh and if you were curious uh what games pass you know like like what that model meant for individual studios and stuff the boost in revenue from having pathologic 2 on games pass like stopped them from needing to go back to crowdfunding to um oh wow uh, to, to, to continue to continue the development so apparently like when you play stuff on games pass the developers see enough of that to uh, make a difference for them so well that's good, good. yeah um i just love this game it is so good uh top five for me and i'm very happy to be streaming it and explaining what's going on uh telling folks you know what's important about the story that we're getting reading the exceptionally good dialogue explaining the uh the uh features uh explaining the mechanics and stuff it's uh it's great it is a very good experience and i'm happy that uh people in the chat of my stream decided to encourage me to do it uh, it's a long game, so I'm probably going to take a break about partway through so I can get a little bit more variety because maybe not everybody is going to be as comfortable in the pit as I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a good time. Any other questions about Pathologic? Nope. No, very cool. All right. Uh, that's all I got. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where we ask you a question, and then you answer it. Uh, Jala, what's the question that you ask the nice people? Well, video game villains live and work in a variety of environments. I asked, what video game villain fortress or hideout would you most want to own yourself? Yeah, and I'll get started here with Tom, who says, I want the castle from Symphony of the Night. If if people I don't like are trying to visit, I can hide in the inverted castle until they leave. Also, <laughs> despite being in 1797, it has modern mas- machinery. So I assume Dracula's internet speed nowadays has to be amazing. He, Dracula has blood net. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you can't find him in a mirror site. <laughs> yeah, that's good dennis i like that <laughs> uh let's see dennis what does alexander say alexander says uh ultimecia's ultimecia's castle from final fantasy 8 is equal parts dracula castle and tardis stylish and connected to every moment in time at once get you a fortress that can do both <laughs> yeah. uh st- Second secondary meme slaps the side of castle. This baby can compress at least five timelines. <laughs> <laughs> Por- porque no los todos. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh Ultimicia's castle would be pretty good. You do have to cause the time crash though. So you have to be comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Ben, what does Elliot say? Elliot says unit co. And the first thing I do is introduce an inclusive restroom policy. Yeah, don't <laughs> you do you you do get yelled at for going in the wrong bathroom? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. This is a Deus Ex reference, by the way, is something yes. that went over my head. <laughs> you you UNECO, It's like the spy agency associated with the UN and mm-hmm. uh, the One World Government. Spoilers. Jala, what does Rookie say? Rookie says, Rapture. Even if Andrew Ryan only owned the building where you find him, it's still an Art Deco underwater tower big enough to play golf in. If you can get rid of the alt-right assholes and enact some common sense plasmid reform, you're set for life. <laughs> yeah, so what you need to do is you need to go in after after uh, Andrew Ryan, but before Sophia Lamb takes it a little bit too far, and then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> stop it before full underwater authoritarian communism so get yourself uh an underwater social democracy that sounds kind of nice doesn't it (laughs) yeah um yeah let's see here uh greg says i've always wanted to live in a castle so i'd love to win uh, to, to live in one of uh uh dracula's homes from the castlevania games Uh, Just not the upside down one, please. Even if I had control over all the monsters, they would soon turn on me if they had to clean up all the puke that I'd make trying to handle that place. 
<laughs> All right, the battle lines have been drawn, inverted or non-inverted. Well, I mean, Alexander can live in the upside down one, and uh, Greg can right. live in the right, right, right side up one. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a duplex. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a duplex that shares the same the same space time as it is. Yeah. Did, did, did are, any they, of... are they under the same roof though? Uh, under and above the same roof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did 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 any of you play the game where you pretended that the ceiling was the floor? And you walked around your house and like, oh no, I can't step there because that's where a light fixture is. I've got to, I've oh, got to yeah. s- step no. up when I'm when I'm going through the door because I've got to step over the, oh, you know, the part of the wall that go, yeah, above the door. Jolly, yeah, I, mean, no. I played that this week. <laughs> there's there's two things that I do when I'm on the phone. Like I have to pace when I'm on my phone. I'm either looking down at like tiles or patterns on the floor, thinking right. about how I have to step in a consistent pattern. Can't step or on the I'm same one up twice. And walking yeah. myself around the ceiling. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I Jolly, you said... The, oh, good. I always played the game where I'd pretend that gravity would shift in a direction, like okay. a horizontal direction, and like try and plan out like what I would need to grab onto if I was like falling horizontally. Right, right. Like, were you afraid that that would happen when you were outside and you would just go flying into space or i remember thinking about it when i was like at like a baseball field and oh, <laughs> seeing yeah. like a very long distance going in the other direction and jolly you didn't do this at all no i pretended i was the pink panther and hummed the theme song while i was running around doing this or rather also good around doing this which is kind of probably why i like stealth games <laughs> <laughs> and also trying very hard not to step on any cracks in right. pavement or tiles or well, you gotta think about your mom's back come on Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh let's see. Uh Ben, what does Austin say? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh? <laughs> I I was not queued up for this. Oh, okay. uh, hey, and Den- my Facebook page went hey, away. De- hey Dennis, what's Austin say? <laughs> Austin says, Come on, Ben. No. Uh, Austin- I planned it out. I was supposed to be Tim Ross, right? <laughs> uh, Max Guild. Uh, so uh, Austin says, Any Dark Souls castle, just so I can watch my servants try to carry food up and down all those ladders. Yeah. Get them a special backpack. Right. <laughs> Get it. The, what is what is the ratio like the incidence of ladders in video games versus the incidence of ladders in real life especially permanent ladders like i have mm. a fair number of ladders for my home but they're like they fold up and they go into a place until mm-hmm. i need to use them so i think it comes down to like making somebody animate walking upstairs is a lot of a headache so <laughs> <laughs> yeah elevators stairs everywhere well and and stairs take up a lot of space if you have an elevator or a ladder, True. it's just straight up. Yeah, you don't have to think about the footprint. But well, animating them carrying living. food up a ladder has to be even more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably do it in an Uncharted game. That's not <laughs> Austin's problem, though. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. And then, Ben, what does Tim say? I'm sorry I went to you in the wrong order, Ben. Well, the other thing was I share my answer with Tim, so I wanted to, to oh, state that as right, well, because right. this is what I thought of before I read his answer. Way to, way to bury the lead. Jeez. <laughs> Tim says, uh, I want the elusive man's office from Mass Effect. I'm not sure if it's the most effective workspace, but it looks pretty darn cool. Hmm. The I wanted to say this for my answer, but I wasn't sure if the elusive man was a bad guy or not. He's just very elusive. Uh, I mean, he <laughs> is he is not a good person, and he's only allied with you for one of the games and then he becomes an antagonist so i would yeah. say that is enough to say that uh I, I would not gerrymander him out of this discussion all right mm-hmm. cool does that make sense yeah yeah okay so so that, that would be yours i mean elusive man's office you know it, it, it it's basically like set in front of the sun at the center of the universe you probably get free cigars probably it's very mm-hmm. fancy it's like the ultimate yes, skylines yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you just made me think of uh, a restaurant at the end of the universe um, i was, I was uh, thinking of that exact same thing too yeah, yeah. Hitchhiker's got to the because it's a good book yeah yeah is that, that's a, is that hitchhikers or is that that's another yeah, that's hitchhiker's book. Yeah, that's it's, hitchhikers. it's, it's the same name of the book too second hitchhiker's oh, okay, book yeah, yeah yeah excellent excellent stuff what a fun concept uh yeah i'll do mine the fortress of regrets the uh the 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 final uh the final uh uh area that you go to uh in planescape torment not so much for the regrets but uh but just because it is a pocket dimension that is shaped entirely around your psyche 
uh, which Ooh. you know that would be fun. Just go in there. Clean, everything clean everything up, is ca- catered. Everything is catered toward you. You know. Why is it on fire? <laughs> because I have anxiety, Jala. Why are there wood trails everywhere? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would say I would say the Fortress of Regrets, and all. So I could live there with all the different versions of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we've done Ben. How about you, Dennis? Yeah, um, I want the Aperture Science Labs and Ooh. just do science on people, Ooh. conduct experience, uh, experiments. These are pretty deadly places. True. Like, not for me if I own them. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like the Aperture Science uh... Lab, it's infinitely reconfigurable. So if you have an understanding with GLaDOS or Wheatley, like mm-hmm. your your home can be anything you want it to be, you know, as long mm-hmm. as it's roughly roughly cube shaped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any home you want, as long as it's cube. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Jala? Well, I would either take the entire monster tower from Azure Dreams because Ooh. the final boss is on the final floor, so therefore the entire monster tower must be this person's place. Yeah, yeah. Or How many floors is the monster tower? 40. Okay, yeah. Or nice. Dr. Wiley's castle, which I'm surprised not one person said because it's shaped like a skull. I mean, oh shit, you're it's got right. All the robots in there. It's got oh, it's got really good curb appeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and that's what you need for resale value. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. No, I like all those answers. This is a fun question. Thank you for putting it up, Jolly. Woo! Thanks for the listeners answering. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I would uh, go and do some uh, other uh, uh, um, free play answers. However, I think we're a lot of us are sleepy, so I'm going yes. to usher us forward, and we're going to do a little bit of a shorter episode this time. So thank you, everybody, for uh, participating in this week's uh, multiplayer. If you'd like to uh, throw in on these in the future, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. And if you want to throw in on any of these villain layers we talked about, I'm sure we could at least find a timeshare somewhere. We could. We could all go in. Yeah. <laughs> Timeshares themselves are pretty villainous. So. <laughs> <laughs> in- more inescapable than any, any of the ones that we talked about. Yeah. If, if, man, you find a space timeshare with the Castlevania option. <laughs> <laughs> the end boss. Now it is time for the end boss where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us uh, that are exciting to us. Jala. Um, what is going on with these sounds that aren't real? Yeah, so scientists have fiddled around with games and their different applications for quite a number of years, and I have reported on quite a number of these types of stories. It's been a hot minute since I reported one of these, and this was interesting. So, scientists created a game that causes people to have hallucination-like perceptions of sounds that aren't there. And this is both done in mice and in people. Oh. Um, so uh, <laughs> Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory of New York, led by Katharina Schmack, yes, Schmack, that brings me great pleasure, um, yeah, may yeah. have found a way to help schizophrenic patients. Okay. Uh, they did, a, like I said, this cross-species uh, experiment on humans and mice. Humans, of course, can talk about their experiences, but mice can be injected with different things to see what happens when, you know, the one or another uh, thing like dopamine or whatever is adjusted. What does that do? Yeah. Um, so... Um, They trained dozens of mice to operate a computer game that plays specific auditory cues, which varied in volume against a, you know, white noise. And the mice learned to poke their noses into ports to report whether or not they'd heard the cue and were given rewards when they were correct. And then also 220 humans, some of whom uh, had a predisposition of having hallucinations and some who didn't, uh, also played. And what... When the mice or the humans reported hearing a cue that wasn't actually played, it was noted as a hallucin- a hallucination-like per- precept or percept, uh, halip. Okay. And both mice and humans reported more halips when the cues were played at a higher frequency, probably because they were expecting to hear sounds more often. Uh, higher frequency um, as in more often or higher frequency yeah. as like a higher pitch? Uh, more often. Okay. 
uh, human participants uh, who have had experiences of hallucinations uh, reported more hallops during the experiments, which hints that there might be neural circuits that could make these exper experiences more likely in certain people. And specific processes in a part of the forebrain appar apparently is uh, like they are related to these hallop uh, occurrences. Okay. So they're kind of trying to narrow down where in the brain the hallucination stuff is happening so that they can start um, helping schizophrenic patients, uh, you know, reduce the number of hallucinations that they have. Yeah. Uh, mice, of course, were had like dopamine boosts and stuff, and they had more hallops uh, reported than when they didn't have any drugs in their system. And they didn't have any other performance problems or any erratic behavior. They were basically dosed up like the dopamine levels of someone who has uh, hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, because so, uh, schizophrenia, I mean, there are multiple ways that it acts, but dopamine is very heavily involved in that yeah, and, they, and any other kind of uh, psychosis, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, uh, usually dopamine blockers are prioritized as a treatment method for yeah. people who have any of those kinds of um, experiences. So the research is basically using this simple game to investigate different regions of the brain, and they can keep applying this and keep fiddling with different um, hormones and things like that to better pinpoint the causes of hallucinations so that they can have better uh, more targeted treatments in patients that have this particular issue. And I thought that was just really neat. Yeah. And it didn't go into any detail about like what kind of game, like it's just some, probably a super simple game that just has, you know, do this. And then, you know, when you hear the tone, do this other thing and whatever, but yeah, yeah. you know, still it's tangentially related to games and it's people doing some kind of basic game to kind of like further the cause of science and wellness. Yeah. This is a whole new level of pictures you can hear. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. I'm, I, I would be curious to look into this and see if they found a way to control for people who were just hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is always something that I think of when there is a, uh, like a, like a Pavlov style thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, the treats were only for the mice. Gotcha. The people okay. didn't get treats it's just that they were trying to incentivize it for the mice because they can't tell the mice yeah you know. yeah mm -hmm. the, just you know yeah. the, that there can't be like a social reinforcement from human to mouse mm -hmm. like there can yeah. from human to human well i hope that the, the humans Man. had snacks somewhere that's what i say <laughs> research shows that mice were treated better than humans in this experiment <laughs> <laughs> i don't know they got injected with stuff i don't know about that give dan a treat come on they, they were injected with dopamine <laughs> get high and then get snacks when i play a video game right come on i mean to, to, to be fair dopamine is one of only two things that you actually like so yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah, this is interesting I, I i really hope that nobody nefarious gets a hold of this research and re reverse engineers it no please don't please don't uh <laughs> Uh, for mine, this is real quick. This is just a thing is happening, but also it's happening very quickly. Uh, a visual novel that I have been looking forward to uh, coming to the Switch is coming to the Switch this week. Uh, the Ooh. House in Fata Morgana uh, is a visual novel uh, that has kind of a horror suspense kind of element to it. Uh, it's like a haunted house that is like ruined multiple generations of people who live there. And you get to, like, go and see all of the horrible things that happen in this house over the different time periods and stuff. Um, it is very highly rated. It had been out on PC and PS4 and PS Vita. Uh, but none of these are systems that I actively play anymore. So I've been waiting for it to come out on the Switch. Turns out it's coming out on the Switch on April the 9th, uh, which people will recognize mm -hmm. as Friday. Today, the day this episode comes out. Cool. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. That premise you just said sounds a lot like Perception, which is that game I was playing and set down so I could play all the Riddick games. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> because it's a house that ruined generations of people's oh. lives, and you get to see all the horrible things that happen in this house. Uh -huh. Although, like, you are a blind lady uh, yeah. exploring it. But yes, like, you're exper experiencing all of that. And yeah. there's also, like, an active presence trying to kill you. Okay. 
Yeah. Also sounds like House of Leaves. <laughs> to, to, to a certain extent, across history, yes. Yeah. Uh, Bingo so I was, card for coal, checked but, off. Uh, for sure. I, I mean, it's just assumed that I'm thinking about House of Leaves all the time. Have you, have you read that, Ben? <laughs> have, I forget. Did you read that? I did. It took me a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So subsequent rereads go much faster. Um, but I, I had been looking forward to this, like the same places that had talked up, like Steins Gate had talked this one up and mm. the, like the visual novel pipeline is so sporadic that like when one of these is going through, not just its translation, but also ports to various systems and stuff. Um, you know, I tend to follow it. And the fact that it's coming out on switch is neat. So after I finish, uh, uh, Phoenix, Wright, I will have a new VN waiting for me. Woo-hoo. And nice. I can report on if it's good. And if it is, I guess we're going to be doing a bonus level. I mean, if you like it. <laughs> no, <we can laughs> if I bonus. like it only, if I don't like it, you don't want to know. <laughs> what? No, I, I want to hear if you like it. Uh, but like, okay. no, I wouldn't make you do a bonus level about something you don't like because I wouldn't force well, you to I play mean, through it all. <laughs> we did that bonus level about Dungam Rampa so I could get mad, but then I actually <laughs> ended up being like fairly level headed about that. One. No, <laughs> not I, nearly I, as I bad didn't. as anybody thought because I got the vitriol out on the level. <laughs> I didn't agree to do the bonus level until you had played Dangan Rampa three of your own volition. <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> uh, Ben. Uh, Oh, sorry, Dennis. Uh, what is going on with uh, with this new deck building game going on? Yeah, I mean, continuing the trend of literally any genre plus deck building is uh, is what you get for for games nowadays. Um, they have a game now that is XCOM plus mm. deck building. Okay, which obviously has my attention. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. called Trials of Fire. Uh, this is out right now, so you can you can go play it. Um, and, and like I mentioned, this is, this is turn-based combat XCOM style, um, using a whole deck building system, um, of, of note, the combat happens on a hexagon grid instead of on squares. And, um, the, the cards that you put into your deck are used both for your abilities and for movement. So you've got that whole multi-use card thing going on that i am quite fond of <laughs> um for deck of wonders reasons and just in, in general i like that mechanic um so yeah I, I you know it is not surprising that we found another genre to staple deck building onto um and your mileage may vary uh in terms of how well that goes depending on what you like in the genre and what you think of deck building um but it seems like trials of fire is a, a very competent attempt at that and uh and a lot of interesting things going on there so if you're like me and you like deck building, and if you're like me and you like XCOM, you might like Trials of Fire. Trials of Fire. It looks like like it has uh I mean the 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 central character in this image, the 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 banner image looks like Egyptian, but also I see like a uh like a Celtic uh Viking guy and an elf person. So Yeah, there's a lot yeah. going on in this image. Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> Whereas the the screenshots of like the actual gameplay, it's it's like tokens of these people moving around on the board. So I'm good with that. Um yeah, very yeah. very lo fi approach, but that is that is completely acceptable. The environments however are very detailed. So mm-hmm. yeah, it looks like a great presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now this looks yeah, cool. Good art direction. Plus plus. I'm down. Um, that'll mm-hmm. be coming out uh, April 9th. So this Friday is busy. <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> uh, and Ben, how about you? In sad news of something that's happened this week, uh, well, I guess in, in neutral news of things that's happened this week, they <laughs> released a Space Jam trailer for the next one with LeBron James. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. That so I, terrible. All, but, I've, but, all I've seen is reactions. So this is like a... They're they're going like full multiverse with it, so draw like drawing in not just Looney Tunes but anybody who's ever been in fiction kind of stuff. Yeah, sure, but none of that stuff matters. The bad okay. part about this is they've <laughs> taken down the Space Jam website. Are you fucking the one kidding me? The one that's been up for the last like 20, 25 years. Are you kidding is no me? No longer there. Go to no, no, you can, you can. I can. I can write this wrong. You can click a button um, and and bring it back. It is still Where? there. You can find it. Where? Uh, Show me the button. I'm, I have it on myself. I'm told it's in the top right corner. Oh, the X button? There is an X button. Oh, there's a Space Jam. Okay. All right. 
<sighs> you got it? Space Jam hyphen 1996 oh is where you, you need to go now, I guess. <laughs> bomb, bomb diffused. Oh my Culture god. Is oh my god. I will say that this might not have been here like three or four days ago. <laughs> yeah. see it. <laughs> that was my fucking rock, you guys. Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> I got, I got to go to Planet B Ball. Okay, because if you yeah, like, if boxes, I can't see the Junior Jam menu, how, what faith in life do I have? I, I need to see the player bios. I, I need to learn about Charles Barkley. We're also going to learn about Charles Barkley. Oh, the press box shuttle! I'm very happy that they that they preserved the Space Jam website. This is a disaster averted. Oh man, the, can you imagine being the person that like didn't save that for archival purposes? It's like the guy who like caught that game losing um, home run, whatever, uh, during the World Series. Oh yeah, no, he had to leave the city. Yeah, yeah. So, thank God they they had it archived. So I think the improvement here is they should make this the Space Jam website, and then for the new one, that should be Space Jam hyphen 2021. Yeah, that's what I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Not spacejam.com slash 1996. At the very yeah. least, they knew that like the, the, they knew that they had to keep it up, or else people like me would fucking mail them nasty things. <laughs> Not like life threatening things, but just gross things. <laughs> yeah. Go on. <laughs> no, I just didn't know. whatever I could find around you know, the house. Just there mail might them. be other websites we need to defend the honor of. We don't want to. We don't want to give away our secrets. It's a site okay. that has a site map. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to hang on this, but like uh, any of this, hang on this, like the rim of a basketball hoop. Yeah, uh, break no. break the backboard. <laughs> break, <laughs> break the backboard. No, uh, just uh, any of these, any of these last vestiges of late nineties, early two uh, thousands, uh, which I'm just gonna call hypnospace. Yeah, any of this mm-hmm. hypnospace needs to stick around, not just like you know in an archive.org. Uh, address that will lose some of the links preserve this stuff mm-hmm. because like these were magical physical locations that we would go to you know to learn this about is, space jam this is the internet as it should be and not skynet secretly trying to destroy us by turning us against each other yeah no this is man i would i if i could flip a switch and podcasting still existed but i could go back to like 1999 internet oh you bet you i would Oh, mm-hmm. uh, you, you get okay. the There's dial up a... sounds. Well, I'm not gonna stop. Gonna stop. In the <laughs> seller souvenirs section, you can download wave files of sounds from the movie. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I need I need to assign something. I need to hear Tweety Bird saying, um, "You go, boy." Um, every time <laughs> one of my buddies logs on, go on. No. What about MJ saying, "You guys are nuts." Yeah, no, that's when somebody logs off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I need. He's fixing a divot. What? So it's oh, it's there. I got, I got you, Dennis. Okay, okay cool. <laughs> so like Lola Bunny's poster is just there's a giant boob sticking out there, and it's like I understand that there there was some fuss on Twitter about there was Lola being changed into like having no gender now basically a lot of people were fussing because I, she's not the sexy bunny anymore but <laughs> no, because not. she's not a titty bunny they they, <laughs> they they like she's like flat and doesn't have curves anymore and so they're upset and it's like wait a minute weren't you weren't weren't people upset when she was released because she was a titty lady like <laughs> I don't look. There I was the horny know. police then. There's the not horny enough police now. <laughs> Get the I, I, the, no matter what you do, that just goes to show you. No matter what you do, booby later or no booby lady, uh-huh. you're gonna upset the fans. The yeah. fans are just gonna be mad no matter what. There's a certain I'm por- gonna, go ahead. I'm gonna have to go to the behind the jam section to see if there's any more information about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to. I need to get the inside scoop of vis a vis Lola's boobs. <laughs> oh man, uh, there's no, there's no fucking way unless I'm being paid. I'm gonna watch this new Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. They they turned LeBron James into a cartoon. Did they ever do that with I, Michael yeah. Jordan? No, they no. didn't. Don't they just did the they did, they did, they did they a much more better. expensive thing. They had cartoon elements of Michael Jordan. Yeah, I yeah. His eyes go big at one point. His, his arm hand, stretches. 
Yeah. No, dude, I that shot is emblazoned in my brain where he stretches his arm to dunk because his arm hair is <laughs> like, unescapable. He gets flattened on a basketball at one point too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, Listen, the, the, I watched the trailer. I'm not ashamed to admit it, and uh, it was it was notably short on like the slapstick. Is is yeah. Wayne Knight present? Is is Newman from Seinfeld present? No, this is this is uh, this is not going to be as good of a movie. Yeah, I mean, w- w- Wayne Knight was the cornerstone of that. Mm-hmm. It's, Yo, it's, can we talk about my man Bill Murray though? Uh, sure, if you can. Is he in it? Well, in the first one, yeah. Well, yeah, of course, in the <laughs> first one. But did they bring him back? Uh, probably not. I, Bill Murray would done. do that in a heartbeat too. You know he would. They ah, have Don Cheadle. That's what they have in the new one. Oh, he's a bad yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. Which, okay, okay. It, but I, I, yeah, actually, I, I will be very sad if Bill Murray uh, is not in the second one. Yeah, at least as a cameo. I mean, for the fans, you know. Mm-hmm. No, well, just for a, Bill Murray, because Bill dare, Murray didn't do anything. Dare different. I tell you that I don't remember a damn thing about that movie? I, I, Space Jam Watch Party, let's go. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, if you want me to throw something, I'm sure. Yeah. And not a basketball. <laughs> I don't even play basketball. <laughs> I, 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 really I played actual that. basketball. I, I, don't really, know I really enjoy you trying to outmaneuver us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so growing up, I had the the two hoop system on my high, on my driveway where there was like the ten foot one, and then my dad had installed like a kitty size one. Okay. The second that kitty size one went away, I never touched a basketball again. No, no, because you don't nice. want to feel bad about yourself. Basketball is no. about feeling empowered. Exactly. Yeah. If I can't dunk on it, it does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> No, Space Jam for me, like, yes, the movie was fun when I was, but that was 1986, so I was, like, nine years old. Perfect Space Jam age, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But, like, it pretty much just existed as, like, the song they would play at the roller rink uh, whenever we had a, whenever there was a birthday (laughs) party uh, at the roller rink, the Coliseum here in Mansfield before it burned down twice. (laughs) <laughs> wait what <laughs> Cole what? did you go there with a the pile of sticks no no I love <laughs> that place it was... Mansfield. why are buildings just burning down here <laughs> no the, the, the chichis burned down three times and they decided to stop putting a chichis there and then the coliseum <laughs> burned down twice and they're like fuck man I don't know let's bulldoze it uh, which sucked because it was a lot of fun it was a it was a, it was a great place to go uh, is you this can't... like fuzz is there is like arson just normalized and it's, like it's, it's for the greater game. good, Ben. It's for the greater yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent so like, much. If you're talking about NBA Jam, I was that was a fun game. That's a good game. But, yeah. Yeah, that that was a good game. Space Jam. Eh. We spent so much time on Space Jam. How do you all feel about bundling it up? <laughs> Can we oh, go? I was, I was about to go into the implications of the redesign of Sonic to lower the bunny, but uh, we don't huh? have to. Yeah, no, we don't need to go there. That'll be. <laughs> Jolly needs to go to sleep, and so do I. So I've, got another, a, I've got an early morning hours. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey John, can we can we button it up? Please, buttons. The credit. Thank you, all of you Space Jammers out there, for listening to level number 366. <laughs> we really appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to close SpaceJam.com because it is in my face. I'm going to close the, the, the new worst SpaceJam.com. There we go. Um, but yeah, you know the things you can do, Patreon and iTunes ratings and reviews and telling your friends, uh, go check out the bonus level that we did about, uh, the first Phoenix Wright game, uh, that Joel and I, uh, put together. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't know if there's anything else to report, but the feedback that I saw on it was good. Yeah. A lot of people liked it quite a bit. There's a spoiler wall. So there if you is. have not played this 20 year old game and you really want to, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, we, we have generality section followed by the run through. Yeah. Uh, so go check that. It's just back there in the public feed. We gave it to everybody. Um, cool. So I think that's everything that I've got. Uh, Dennis, what's going on with Deca wonders? Uh, let's see. We released, we, we continue to release new concept art. So, um, go check that out. Uh, Lauren Brown does an amazing job and it's always fun to see new stuff. Uh, nothing too crazy though. Still got a while before like pre-orders are going to close so you can still get in on it if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, just, just cranking out art or rather, uh, Lauren is cranking out art. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to plug? 
No. Okie doke. Uh, so I've been Cole Ross. You can see my tweets on Twitter at Cole Ross. I've been Dennis Furia. You can check out that Deck of Wonders art at Deck of Wonders on Instagram. I'm Jalachan in places. You can find me there. I'm Ben Rickle. And stick around for some titles. Okay, who's got titles for me? I got a few. Okay. Stick Highway. Oh, right. Yeah, about me burning down my house. <laughs> Spread and isolate. <laughs> also about your house. <laughs> okay. You can't find him on a mirror site. <laughs> Underwater social democracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Under and above the same roof. <laughs> okay. Space timeshare. Yeah. Show me the button. <laughs> and inescapable arm hair. <laughs> which oh, i yeah. think that's the one i'm gonna have to vote for because it was the most ridiculous one <laughs> uh dennis what you got um i i also had space time share okay i had uh dick b riddick yep <laughs> that's his name. richard b riddick dick b riddick is that true yes his name is richard b riddick oh, i thought it was a goof <laughs> yeah, so no, seriously um, <laughs> uh, I also had librarian. <laughs> what was that? What librarian? librarian. The librarian. Uh, okay. All right. Those are mine. Okay, Ben. What you got? I just have one. I have. I think it's blood. It's probably blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can. <laughs> it's taking me forever to type this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I have Porque No Los Todos. <laughs> um, I like Space Timeshare, all as one word. Um, I'm down for that. That one had that one had votes. Uh, do we have any uh, any cases for other stuff? I already made my case for my one, but then inescapable arm hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, does anybody want to throw in and overrule me on an escapable arm here? I think of the two. I, I'm with space time share. Oh, I know. I just want to point out that on the space jam website, they have a link for Mars attacks, but if you go there, that <laughs> website doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> space jam stood the test of time. <laughs> that, that is so sad. So much about the late nineties is so sad because of the evidence that we have of it. Um, space time share. Is that, uh, is that good with that? Uh, good, good, uh, good with everybody. Okay. Good for okay. Me. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to go. I have a, uh, I I've got to wake up early tomorrow. I am giving a talk to a uh, class at UC about podcasting. So oh, nice. I'm going to, going to ruin some, uh, going to ruin some lives. <laughs> I was about to be like, man, that's a long way to drive, but everything is virtual. So. It is, yeah. If it was Open in person, I would run away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey there, Greta, girl. Uh, Aww. Okay, um, cool. Take care, everybody. No, get get to the end of the lecture and tell them that this has been a podcast the whole time. Yes, yeah. I've been recording this. I'm really making content. Yep, nothing is not Maybe content. <laughs> uh, um cool. Well take care everybody. Cool. See y'all. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Night night. Bye, Bye. Joe. Bye. Bye, Ben. Bye, Joe.